The FBI is working to learn if four men arrested for a robbery at a local jewelry store are tied to similar crimes across the country. Why y'all fuck with me? Oh, you stole my shit. What I steal from you, bro? I'm about to send you your money back. Police say these three men walked into this Jarrett near a busy shopping area on Tuesday night around 7 with hammers. That's crazy. I just can't believe that happened here. We checked their backgrounds and all four men are from Detroit. All right, so somebody's life story that I've always appreciated was T Grizzly's. Consistently good rapper. I always look forward to hearing one of his verses, but a lot of people I don't think know his full story. This is a man who was destined for university, but somehow ended up in Kentucky on the floor with a gun pointed to his head in the middle of a jewelry heist, right? He was trying to pull off. So this particular story covers his younger days when he was casing out robberies, spanning across multiple different different states and this iconic moment when a dude confronted him after the fact to yell at him for stealing his Xbox back in the day. You stole my fucking Xbox One, my fucking MacBook, my fucking iPhone. I had a wallet, had about $190 in that bitch. Now we're gonna get into all this, but first, let me show you my song of the day. This is Oreo J. Check him out. Now, in order to understand T Grizzly's story, we gotta travel to Michigan, more specifically, Detroit. Everybody in America knows Detroit is a tough city. They've been through a lot. Severely underfunded, underprivileged, and its manufacturing industry got absolutely decimated. A lot of hardworking people were left with no work, no jobs, nothing to sustain life with. You can travel to Flint, Michigan and find out the water crisis over there where people were not getting clean water to drink and the government has not done a thing about it. Now the story of Detroit comes with harshness and T Grizzly's story is no different, right? He grew up in a family of drug dealers, his mama was a drug dealer, his pops, his auntie, everybody around him was selling dope. But a lot of people, they see T Grizzly and they got him fucked up. This was a kid who was destined for university, getting accepted to major in finance, despite coming from an environment of material destitute. Now, just as T Grizzly was hitting that pivotal moment at the end of high school, his pops gets murdered. His moms get sentenced to 15 years in prison. And shortly after, Grizzly gets a letter in the mail telling him he gets accepted into Michigan State University. But tuition is like 15 grand a year. And some kids that get accepted into school don't even have the option to go. This was a big opportunity for Grizzly, so he went for it. But he knew he needed a job. And as you guys know, in order to get a job, you need experience. But in order to get experience, you need a fucking job. So Grizzly heads up to MSU. He invites one of his friends from his neighborhood to go up there and take part in some of the opportunities. And one day, this friend comes to him with 11 grand in his pocket. And Grizzly's like, yo, how did you get 11 grand? Whatever you're doing, I want in. It turns out the friend was doing B and E's, which is breaking and enterings. That's when they came up with this plan to basically ransack the dormitories on campus. They started systematically robbing these dorms for all their valuables, right? They'd take computers, cell phones, and whatever cash people had. And the great part is they did this while people were sleeping at night. Grizzly's a big guy. I don't know how he was able to tiptoe into people's dorms and steal their shit at night like he's the fucking Grinch. T Grizzly and his friend successfully pulled off 12 robberies. By the end of it, they got at least $10,000 worth of stolen merchandise and nearly $10,000 in cash. But that's only how much the police recovered. Grizzly had about 40 laptops and 20 iPhones in his room but the police were catching on to them. You recognize these guys? MSU police want to talk to them about a recent theft in North Hubbard Hall. If you have any information that can help, call MSU police, or you can go to their Facebook page to leave an anonymous tip. Unfortunately, as they were planning to leave, the police intercepted them. Word got out quick that Grizzly was apprehended, so one of his friends ran to his dorm in order to grab the stuff that was stolen and move it somewhere else so the police would get off their trail. He moved all the stuff that Grizzly had stolen into his own dorm. This actually hurt the cop's case because it was tampering with evidence. So the police had to let Grizzly go and take a couple months to actually build a case and get some evidence. That's when his friends came to him with this plan for a jewelry heist. 
a smash and grab over in Kentucky. Now, for those of you who don't know, a smash and grab is exactly what it sounds like. You go to a jewelry store, you bust the display cases, you grab the loot, and you run for your fucking life. At the time of this story, jewelry store robberies in the States resulted in losses of $66.5 million just that year alone. God damn, sounds like it works. So Grizzly, who already had an arrest warrant for his prior burglaries, decided, fuck it, I'm probably gonna need some lawyer money. If this goes well, I'll be able to pay for that, and financially, I won't be ruined. So his plan was to go with his friend to Kentucky, they set up in these apartments, they stole a car, and the place that they were targeting was called the castle. Now at the time, they thought it was a jewelry store, turns out it was actually a pawn shop, but they had this whole thing planned out. They made a call to the police in the area, and they told them there was a shooting over at a school to get them moved and away from the area. With the police headed in that direction, Grizzly and the boys in the stolen car, they went up to the castle, which they thought was a jewelry store, but it was actually a pawn shop. When they get there, they've got hammers in their pockets, they go in, and this is Kentucky. It's like 90 degrees out, and they're wearing hoodies. So the owner immediately confronts them and says, why are you wearing hoodies? He tells them, oh, we're boxers, right? We're trying to lose weight. Smart move, quick thinking. Now, after a minute or two, nobody's doing any action. So Grizzly immediately grabs the hammer, smashes some of the display case, and says, let's grab these Rolexes and let's get the fuck out of here. But just as they're gathering the loot, they hear, freeze. One of the customers had a gun pointed directly at T Grizzly. Now, don't forget, this is Kentucky. So of course the customer had a gun, right? Of course he did. Now it takes the police over an hour to come to this scene because they thought there was a shooting going on at the campus because Grizzly and them called them to tell them that. Now Grizzly was found guilty of the botched robbery and they had to sit down and do some time in Kentucky, which by the way, the prison in Kentucky is terrible, bro. It's one of the worst prisons in the US. And after he served time there, he had to go do time in Michigan for the dormitory burglaries. This made Grizzly into the man he is. He took this life story and he made First Day Out, the track that basically gave him a career. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this, is Grizzly's got some of the best jewelry right now. The Grizzly Bear piece, the Cuban links that he has, and that illustration of his downfall being because of a botched jewelry heist and then now he's got some of the best jewelry in the game i just think that's a, a beautiful illustration but yeah man that's it for this video let me know what you guys think in the comments below make sure you subscribe with notifications on and i'll see you in the next one